Hi everybody, welcome to my fifth beam video. In this video, I'm going to be solving the problem you see here, and I'm going to be plotting the shear force and bending moment diagrams. If you want to know something else about beams, feel free to check out any of my other videos. So like you need to do in any beam problem, the first step to analyzing something to get its bending moment and shear force diagrams is to find the reactions at the support. The way you do that is by making an overall free body diagram and analyzing it. Alright, I'll leave it at this for now. Now, you've probably seen this little arm contraption in your problems before. Now, what is that doing there? Because it's doing two things. First of all, it's creating a moment at this point because this force is applied a distance away, and it's having a force getting transferred onto here somewhere. So the question is, where are those forces then? Where do we put them? So the 100 newtons that's coming down, that doesn't get transferred to here. All right, it doesn't just go down here because there's no way that force has a physical way to get straight down to here. That force, it gets kind of transferred out here and then it can drop down, in this case at 3 meters. So we put that 100 newtons right there. All right, and it's the same thing with the uh, moment that you get here because you get in a moment because you have a force applied a distance away. So it's going to be 100 times 1 1.5, that's 150. The moment also gets applied here, and this direction is causing it to spin this way, so we'll keep it that way. 150 newton meters. So that's basically how you collapse this contraption onto a free body diagram. Alright, and then we have a few more things happening here. This distributed load is giving us some sort of loading out here. Alright, and we'll just call it force from the triangular loading. And then, of course, you have some reactions, all right? So you can imagine the most obvious one is just a reaction here, resisting these forces. I'm also going to have a moment reaction. So just draw that in positive. And that's it. That's all our forces we have. Now we just need to go into what is the triangular force. The triangular force is just going to be the area of this thing, really. Because at the end, we know how many newtons per meter. So we times it by the total, so this would be 6 newtons per meter. That would give us all this space here. We don't want that, so we're just going to divide that by 2. So we can write Alright, now this is the magnitude of this force. Now where does it act? Well, it always acts at the centroid of the geometry of the distribution. So if you had a linear distribution, like square kind of, it would act at the center. But now we have a triangle. So it's going to act one third away from the thick end, or two thirds away from the thin end. So somewhere here. Alright, so two thirds of six, that's four meters away. And of course, this acts at the center. This one here does. So I'll draw in those dimensions for you. Okay, that's all we need. Now we just sum up the forces and the moments.
All right, there you have it. That's our reactions. All right, so this essentially, if you have an intuitive idea of what the bending moment and the shear diagrams are going to look like, you can pretty well solve it from here. Because you can imagine our shear moment diagram, at the support, we have the reaction. So that's going to kick us all the way up to some value. And now slowly as we go, this is going to start to push us down. So it's going to start to go down quadratically. All right, and then here, another 100 newtons pushes us down, so it's going to drop. And then we keep on getting pushed down at a greater rate, and then it's going to drop us all the way down to zero at the very end of the beam. All right because there's no reason to be shear force at the end of the beam. And the same thing for the bending moment. All right? Because we know at the support it's 2800. All right? And now if we were to uh, you know make a little cut, our bending moment would be positive, and this one's positive. So that means the bending moment at the support will be negative this value. So it'll be starting, you know, way down somewhere. And then we slowly we need to get the zero at the end. So if we're going up, all right, as a cubic, cubic function, and then we got to here, and it's going to be you know a discrete jump. Now is that up or down? So it's being applied counterclockwise. All right, and our moment on the inside is also counterclockwise. They're both positive. So when we add this, in a sense, we're taking it away because we're taking a moment. You know, we have whole equation, and then we're adding 150 equals 0. So when you go to solve it, it's going to be negative 150. So it's just going to jump down. So it's going to be going up, jump down, and then back up to 0. All right? So keep that in mind. It's just kind of an intuitive way to look at it. I'll develop some of the equations, and then we'll plot the graphs. So we'll start with cuts. All right, so we can describe this piece here. That's one cut, and then of course after we added the force in the moment, this is another section here. So let's just call this one, two, and get going on that. All right, there you have it. Don't forget to put your reaction moment in. That's a very common mistake, just to forget that one. So let's do sum of forces, sum of moments. All right, so what is this force here? Well, basically, we have that triangular distribution, right? It's here, and that's part of a greater distribution here. So it goes up to 225 over a total distance of 6. And we're analyzing ours at a distance x away. And we can call the value of the function here t. So this t is going to be newtons per meter, just like this is newtons per meter. So it's just going to give us how many newtons per meter there is at a point x. And using similar triangles, we can write that. Okay, so then the total force would be this times a distance. In some cases, it's going to be x, so it's going to be times some sort of distance. 
and then times half. Okay, so in our case it's going to be just x, right, because the distance that we're looking at is x, so it's going to be x squared, and then 37 and a half divided by 2. Alright, and there you have it. So moving on to the moments. Notice here again, I take it about the V1, so that I need to use the reaction at the support instead of taking it at the reaction and having to use V1. Because I only just found out what V1 is. So if I would need to use it, there's a chance I made a mistake here. And then that mistake would propagate into my moment. This way, I keep the mistake out of it if I would have made one. Alright, so I just did some algebra quickly here. Of course, this force here is just equal to this bit here that we use to solve into here. Alright, so let's get a free body diagram happening of the second piece. Alright, there we go. So basically I've just taken the cut on the other side and now we just include this funny looking uh, bits of information here which came from that arm that was sticking out. So let's go ahead and sum up the forces in the Y. I know we could take the moments, but I'm not going to go through that whole bit because it's just a big complicated thing of algebra. Let's just look at it intuitively. So I'll get some bending moment and shear force diagrams up here. Okay. So like we said before, the shear force is going to start at some value equal to the magnitude of the reaction because the reaction kicks us up initially. 
All right, and then it's going to go down quadratically according to this formula right here. All right. All right, until we get about half the distance, where x equals 3. And then we get like a jump here. That's going to knock us down exactly 100. And then the next bit is going to make us go all the way back to here. Okay, so for the bending moment, let's take a look at the first one here. When x equals 0, we have this big negative value here. And then as it goes, it's going to slowly get bigger and bigger, and by the end of the beam, we want to be at 0, because there's never any bending moment at the end of a cantilever beam. Bending moment just means internal twist. Well, there's nothing to twist against at the end of a beam, so has to be zero. So this is going to go up. Tell about there. And x equals three. All right, now we know it's going to jump somewhat, and then it's going to go to zero all the way over here. Now we haven't developed the equation that's going to describe this, but in most cases, that's not extremely important because what you're looking for is the maximum bending moment and you don't really care about what happens here as long as you have a general idea of what's going on. So we know that's going to jump 150. Now, does it jump up or down? All right, so that's a bit of a question. Well, like we said over here, when we do bending moment, you can see this is positive this way and the 150 is also positive this way. So you're going to have your bending moment equation plus 150, but when you go to solve for bending moment, it's going to be minus 150. So in this case, we're going to have to jump down 150. Alright, so we're going to jump down here, and then continue our journey all the way back to zero. Alrighty. Okay, now the only caution you need to do this to make sure that you can do this sort of like intuitive uh, bending moment diagram drawing is that this jump here doesn't sink you below this value. However, you can check it in this case, it's uh, definitely true. All right, so those are shear force and bending moment diagrams. All right, um, you can uh, take note that in between these two, we always have a positive value here. So it means there's always going to be a positive slope here. Alright, now the addition of that little arm, it added a point shear force, which dropped our shear force, and added a point moment, which dropped our moment. Alright, so hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video on beams.